Hello, my name's Tristan and welcome to the next topic for our series on paediatric presentations in the emergency department. As with the previous topics that I've covered, this is going to be aimed at people who are doctors maybe between two and five years um, out of med school who are potentially new to seeing children in the emergency department and just looking to build up a bit more knowledge and a skill base so they can feel more confident in assessing a child when they see one. Now, this is not really aimed at fellows of paediatric emergency and medicine or paediatricians because it's going to be too basic for those of you that have a lot of experience in this area. So I think rashes is a really good thing to go through because it's quite a common presentation and it's something that a lot of us feel a little bit overwhelmed by, especially when we first start seeing kids. So by the end of this um, series of videos, the idea is that you're going to be able to recognise some of the serious rashes and then kind of know that you need to do something about them and, and escalate appropriately. You're also going to be able to recognise when a rash is serious, even if it's a rarer one that you're not familiar with uh, and you can't really remember too much about. I'm hoping that you'll be able to recognise enough to know that you need to escalate it, get help, get specialist help and get the child some investigations and treatment that they need. And then I also want to go through a few of the common but less serious rashes, just so you can build up some of that pattern recognition, really make your life a bit easier when you're seeing those high volumes of kids in a busy paediatric department. Now, the take home points for this talk are, number one, assess the whole child. It's not just about looking at the rash and making a judgment. You've got to assess the whole child, how are they doing? And your, your assessment of the whole child will usually be uh, correct in terms of guiding whether the child needs admission and treatment versus discharge and monitoring at home. The second point that builds from that is that children that look well and have normal observations and then they're well hydrated, you know, passing urine and things, they don't normally have an emergency. Whether or not the rash is present, they're usually well enough to go home, be monitored and reviewed if necessary at a later date. The inverse of that point is the third take home point, which is that you should be particularly cautious when a child looks unwell. Uh, that includes if the parents think they look unwell and are concerned, or if they have any abnormal observations, a non-blanching rash or a fever. And any fever should prompt caution and a more thorough assessment. But you should be particularly cautious when you see a child who has a fever for more than five days, because it should make you wonder whether the child has Kawasaki disease. And I'll do a separate video on that. Now, this is not a comprehensive review of paediatric rashes. You could spend hours talking about it and it would be very boring and it would just contribute to you feeling even more overwhelmed than you already do. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to focus on a few of the most serious and a few of the most common rashes. Be aware that there's a lot more out there than this and this is just a beginning. It's a primer on rashes. It is not the definitive tome with everything you need to know because that I think would just be too much to take in in one go. Also not really gone through the management in great detail on most of the following videos because I, firstly I think rashes are a lot about diagnosis and pattern recognition and even with the more serious ones if you can recognize and make the diagnosis you usually have time to then look them up and figure out what to do. And that recognition and pattern recognition is, is absolutely key. So memorising all of the next steps for investigations and management, usually not necessary on a practical level because you have time to, to look that up elsewhere. So the general approach to assessing a child with a rash in the ED is to just do your full normal assessment. You go through your history, do your full history and examination and examine the whole child looking for the rash everywhere, but really also just examining all the main body systems like you would pretty much any child who comes in um, unwell to an emergency department. Now, as well as the normal things that you do in your history, don't forget to specifically ask questions about fevers. Have they got a fever? How long have they had it? When was the fever related to the rash in terms of timing? Was it before, during or after? And then fluid intake, are they having a normal amount of fluid intake? Are they making a normal amount of urine? What's the overall activity level like? And then screen for things that would make a child more susceptible to severe infections and complications from infections. So that means looking at their vaccination history to see if they might be more at risk of things like measles looking to see whether they're immunodeficient and therefore more at risk of sepsis and other severe infections or any other chronic conditions that predisposes them to developing complications and makes them more vulnerable if they have less physiological reserve for example. Examine the child 
and don't forget to look in the mouth and throat. You also got to look for petechia and purpura, and that means checking to see if any any rash blanches. And by blanches, I mean goes white when you press it. So any red rash should turn white when you press it. If it doesn't, that's got to make you think they've got petechia or purpura, and that should raise some suspicions of things like meningococcal sepsis. Check for lymphadenopathy mostly in the neck, but do check elsewhere in all the other lymph nodes. And then generally just expose the child head to toe, look at all their body to see where the rash is and what kind of rash they have, and also examine all their other systems. So there's nothing too tricky about this. It's basically just take a full history, do a full examination, and then you won't miss things and things like associated signs and symptoms. Now, the references I've used to make the following videos are here. I've relied heavily on DermNet New Zealand, which is just an amazing resource that I really recommend any of you consult as a reference point if you need to look something up with a rash. It's really one of the best dermatology reference guides, I think, in the world. And it's written by dermatologists. It's available free. They have great pictures. It, the pictures are available for use on a Creative Commons license. I've used quite a few of them in some of the specific videos that we'll be talking about. Overall, I definitely recommend it. I also think that Don't Forget the Bubbles rash modules is pretty good in terms of some extra learning if you want a bit more after you've gone through these videos and want to kind of you know solidify your knowledge. So that's it for the overview and now let's get into the most serious rashes that you might be encountering when you're in the emergency department.